basic definition of sensor followed by sensor system then followed by the data sheet discussion which we used to call as static characteristics but the uh, the perspective of this discussion is different from the other one here we will see with the help of a real time example after that what we will do is we will see how uh, what are the different parameter we consider in order to select a sensor system sensor sensor and a sensor system that is with respect to an application we vary the sensor and we vary the sensor system that is uh, covered under uh, second part of unit 1 uh, then the last part of unit 1 the uh, sensor is actually a part of sensor system and uh, sensor system is a part of instrument so based upon the application we uh, select different type of instrument the second unit uh, contain two parts first part title is biosensor second part title is mems or nano sensors under first part what we will do is we study uh, the uh, different types of biosensors starting with the uh, overview block diagram uh, followed by a, a different term is used here called as bioreceptor uh, different types of bioreceptors and here it is little different from other sensor because it comprises of two block under sensor first one is the reaction of the sample with a bioreceptor second one is uh, a transduction mechanism which convert the transform quantity into electrical quantity the second part of unit 2 is called as mems or nano sensors so under this we will see uh, mem sensors and nano sensors mem sensors and nano sensors are different from other sensor from the uh, point of view of implementation of sensor okay uh, and not from the point of view of application not from the point of view of the uh, type of sensor like chemical sensor we have fiber optic sensor we have so the moment we call it to be mem sensors or nano sensor its size should be uh, in the scale of either micron to millimeter or in the scale of nanometer when size is the object then we go for mem sensors or nano sensors so in this particular topic we see the fundamental things of mem sensors followed by uh, the uh, one of the machining mechanism of mem sensor then a uh, few biomedical applications of mem sensors then nano sensors is defined and one example of nano sensor is covered called as carbon nano two so i am moving to next uh, unit uh, discussion uh, overview discussion unit 3 comprises of again two parts part a uh, is uh, smart sensors and part b is electromagnetism in sensing so smart sensors are nothing but a sensor which is equipped with additional component like analog to digital converter filters amplifiers followed by most important thing a microcontroller in which decision making capability or computing capability is available after seeing some of the technology fundamentals we see smart sensors application then second part of unit 3 is electromagnetism in sensing so already we have studied this type of sensor but this topic discussion is different what we will do what we are going to do is we see how the inductance how the electromagnetism supports in sensing okay we start with the fundamentals of uh, the uh, induction principle uh, 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 including faraday's law of electromagnetic induction and other things uh, in particular uh, we uh, the the uh, passive element which is used here in this particular part is inductor and then a few applications obviously are covered uh, on on this principle then unit 4 comprises of two parts part a cover chemical sensors part b cover fiber optic sensor chemical sensors is application oriented discussion here so uh, uh, all chemical uh, a, a few chemical sensors are covered over here Uh, 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 and uh, uh, the syllabus covers semiconductor gas detectors, ion selective electrodes, conductometric sensor, and mass sensors. The part B of fiber optic sensor 
Uh, again, this is uh, 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 based upon the fiber optics technology. The fiber optics technology, how it can be used to perform sensing operation. See, there, there, there can be direct uh, extraction of uh, uh, parameter from the fiber sensor or it can be uh, extracted in indirect way. That we will discuss in detail in our uh, uh, unit four part B discussion. So uh, after covering the introduction of fiber optic sensor, we start uh, covering a few applications. First application is temperature measurement with FOS. Second is pressure measurement with FOS. Third is displacement measurement with FOS. Fourth is turbidity measurement with FOS. And last one is pollution measurement with FOS. Hope you are noting the things. Now I'm moving to unit five uh, overview, uh, the robotic sensor. Robotic sensor is very, very useful discussion under advanced sensor because uh, most of the people interested in going for robotics automation. As I already told you, there is no concept of automation without sensors uh, in the loop. So uh, uh, robotic sensors actually, uh, uh, rob robots actually uh, try to replicate the uh, human beha behavior. That's why human uh, have a sensory system. So robotic sensor also need to have sensory kind of uh, uh, systems in that uh, uh, apart from the conventional sensing, uh, humans also have a human vision. That's why a robot sensor uh, also include robotic vision. So uh, what we will do is we see the characteristics of robotic sensor. What are the thing needed uh, into the robotic uh, under sensor part that we will first to cover. Then a few robotic sensors under both analog and digital categories are covered. So under that, what uh, uh, under our course, so, uh, two major things are mentioned. One is obstruction detection that can be done with the help of proximity sensor. Another one, touch sensor that can be done with the help of touch sensors or tactile sensors. And finally, I told you the vision discussion with respect to robotics are covered. So this is overview of advanced sensors. The reference books I have sent you on your email. So I'm just stopping this recording so that it become 